So today we're going to be talking about cash busting assets. But before we're going to do that, I would like to do some cleanup. We've got quite a few problems in our setup so far. So if we look at our tasks in gulp.js, we're going to see we've got some duplications. So for example, we've got SCSS dev and SCSS, and this is repetition. And I believe we can avoid that. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to bring our is dev function from our rollup build. So if we look at our rollup.js in the build directory, we've got function is dev. And I'm just going to grab this and move this to our gulp file and put it on the very top. And now what we can do, we can do exactly the same thing as we did in our rollup. So I'm going to console log is dev. And let's run our gulp with npx gulp, let's say twig. And let's see what happens. So our is def is going to be false. If we run any gulp task with config dash def, we should get our evaluation to true. I mean, obviously npx gulp twig and passing additional flag, this is quite verbose. So what we're going to do, we're going to actually use npm scripts again. In reality, we're only going to run two tasks for our build. Either we're going to build or we're going to run a dev environment. So what I'm going to do in our package.json, I'm going to create two scripts. And first is going to be build. And in here, we're going to run npx gulp build. And other one is going to be dev. So here, we're going to run gulp dev, but this time we're going to pass our config dev flag. So now if we run our npm scripts, npm run build, we should see that our is dev is evaluating to false. But if we run our dev task, we should see that this is evaluating to true. Perfect. So now how we can use that in our gulp file. So what we want to do, certain tasks or certain parts of the stream we want to run conditionally. So for example, here, we only want to generate the source maps if we're running in dev mode. I mean, we could split the stream and join it back together, but that's quite messy. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to install additional package called gulp if. So in terminal, I'm going to run npmi dash dash save dev gulp if. After that, we're going to have to import this on the very top. So let's do a gulp if require. And now we should be able to run our pipes conditionally. So for example, here, what we can do, we can say gulp if, and our condition, which is our function is dev. And then we can execute our source maps here. And this will only execute if our dev is dev evaluates to true. Otherwise, nothing happens. So we're going to do the same thing here when we write in them, like so. And we're also going to add additional condition in this pipe. So let me just split this so it's more visible, like this. We're going to say gulp if. Now we can use ternary operator with gulp if, so we're going to have if it's dev, if it's dev, we're going to execute our SAS without minification. Otherwise, we're going to execute SAS compiler, but we're going to minify the files. So let's grab this like so, like this. Now, we should be able to remove our SCSS task. We're going to have to update all the references to SCSS colon dev because we don't have this task anymore. So remove this. And if we look here, we're going to remove this one. And now if we try to run our task, with npm run build, we get an error. 
task never defined scss 61 we never renamed our task so let's do this now let's try to run this again so now when we check our public folder assets css we're gonna see that the file is minified but our source maps are still there and this is because when we run build we don't clean our public directory so let's quickly sort this out so when we build when we run our task build before anything else runs we're going to execute public clean like this let's run this again and check our assets so looks like our css file is compiled and it's minified and we don't get any source map so that's perfect so if we try to run our dev task we're gonna see that our css coming unminified including the source maps next we're gonna sort out our typescript tasks so if we go back we'll see again that we've got two tasks to compile our typescript one is for dev one is for build so what we're gonna do we're gonna have just one task called ts compile this one and we're gonna cut this and we're gonna say gulp if and we're gonna use the scenario operator again so we're gonna say is dev if it's dev we're gonna execute something if it's not we're gonna execute our build task and if it is dev we're gonna execute our rollup with config dev flag so we're gonna pass this in here save that then we can remove this one and again we're gonna have to remove the reference for ts compile dev and we're gonna do this so if we try this again and we run npm run build we should get our JavaScript minified without the source maps. And it looks like this is the case. So now if we run npm run dev, we're going to see that our JavaScript comes unminified with inclusion of the source maps. Another thing that is missing is when we run our twig task when we compile our html we are not able to minify it and it would be nice if we run our build we can minify our html so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna install another dependency called gulp html min so npmi dash dash save dev and we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but this time in our twig task. So we've got our twig. So just before we write to our public directory, we're gonna add additional pipe. And we're gonna say, whoop if it's not dev. We want to execute minification for HTML. So what we're gonna say, we're gonna say HTML min like this, and we're gonna pass configuration object. We're gonna say collapse white space and set this to true. So let's try this out. So we're gonna run npm run build. And let's check our compile HTML. And it's not coming through we've got an error html min is not defined and it's probably because i didn't require it so let's acquire this let's run this again and now we should get our html and if we look looks like it's working quite nicely everything is minified let's run this in dev mode and our html is unminified so I believe this is everything for our housekeeping and now we can focus on asset cache busting. So the easiest way to bust the cache in the browser, it would be to append the param. And I'm sure you've seen that before. So we do something like version and maybe 1.2. Now updating this manually for every asset in every view 
this is quite painful. So I think we can easily automate this. And because we've got templating language, it's going to be very, very easy. So let's go back to our group file. The way I decided to go about it is to add a function to our Twig compiler. And then we should be able to use this function in our views. So for example, we should be able to do something like this. If I go to my main layout and I have this JS file, we should be able to do something like that. Instead of hard coding our asset path like that, we should be able to do something like this assets. And we're going to pass into this function, the string, the path to the asset itself. So in order to do that, we're going to have to define a function for a Twig compiler and, and pass the configuration to it. If we look at our Gulp file and look at our Twig task, we've got a Twig compiler here. So what we can do, we can pass additional configuration and maybe a data that needs to be passed to the view. So, so first of all, let's do it here. Let's pass the object directly. So what we're going to do, we're going to define functions and this accepts an array of objects and every object is a definition for a function every function needs a name and our it's going to be called assets then we need a function that will be executed so we're going to say function and this function takes arguments so in our case it's going to be a path passed for our function in the view so let's say args and for now, let's just console.log args. And let's see what we're going to get when we try to compile our twig. npx group twig. So looks like we've got something wrong. So let's check if our name is correct. And yes, looks like the name was wrong. So let's try again. So now we're going to see that we pass the path to our asset and we console log this in our function so it's coming through so now what we could do we could just return our arg and maybe let's call this argument instead of arguments arg so we're gonna do return and let's use string literal like so and now we could say something like this version equals 1.2 so let's try to compile this on config dev and if we check our html we're gonna see that our app.js has the query param attached to it but again this is this is manual so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna generate this hash based on the current timestamp but before we're gonna do that we're gonna grab this object and we're gonna put it on the very top I'm going to assign this to a constants that equals our configuration object, like so. Now we should be able to just pass it to our twig compiler, which is here. So let's do this. So now this needs to be a variable pass to it. So we're going to say const assets hash equals. Now we're going to need crypto. Crypto is a cryptography package for Node.js and should be available out of the box. So there's no need for installing any additional dependencies. And now what are we going to say? First, let's get the timestamp. So if we do plus new date, we're going to cast the date to a timestamp. So let's do this and let's see what we are getting. So I'm going to pass this as a variable in here, like so. Let's compile this. And if we check, you're going to see we are getting a timestamp. Now, I think this is good enough, but I wouldn't mind having something nicer like, like a hash. So we're going to hash it. So let's go back to our assets hash and we're going to say crypto dot create a hash. And we're going to use MD5 because it gives us um, not too long, not too short, reasonably sized hash. Then we're going to have to say update and we're going to pass our string that we want to actually hash it. So we're going to say update. Now 
if you pass this, this is going to fail because we get, we're get we getting a number. So we cast in a date to a number, which uh, becomes a timestamp, but we cannot pass a number here. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to cast this to string. So we're going to do this. And then on the very end, we're going to say digest hex. And this should give us a really nice hash. So if we try to compile this again and check our HTML, we see we've got the hash. Now, every time we compile this, the hash is generated based on the timestamp. So the hash will be different. So now, whenever we deploy our application, wherever we build it, we're going to have a different cache. So if it's going to get deployed, our assets are going to have the query param, meaning that every time we deploy, we're going to retrieve a new version of our assets. And we can do that for JS files, we can do that for images, and we're going to do that as well for our app.css. So here, whenever we're going to reference an asset, we're just going to pass it to an assets function. Like so, pass this as a string, like this, like this, and let's compile this again. Something is wrong. And if we check our HTML, we're going to get our asset versioned. And this is it. This is really it for cache busting our assets. If you like the video or this video helped you in any way, please remember to smash that like button or even subscribe. As always, I will include the link to the GitHub repository in the description. Thank you for watching.